We're here with George Abraham, product manager at Infragistics, who's here to talk with us a little today about prototyping and why it's so important for a great user experience. Hey George, thanks Hi. for talking with us today. Well, I'm delighted to be here for prototyping. Let's say you're a developer and you're tasked with building an app. With regards to the recent shift towards prototyping rather than wireframing, can you just talk a little bit about the difference between the two and how the design process is affected by that choice? Sure. Uh, Wireframing sounds nice and sounds nice and simple because they have the word wire in them. Uh, I don't know where it came from. Some people draw uh, similarities with architectural bl blueprints, but software is very different from homes and buildings because, you know, me personally, I have 30 odd years living in homes. So I pretty much can have some idea of how it would be in that particular floor plan. Software is so different. People create custom doors, custom ways to open those doors and all that stuff. So what we really need is a sort of an experience which the users can participate in and prototyping is just one way in which you're able to try out ideas, capture the user flows and be able to validate it with people. Right? So that sets prototyping slightly apart from wireframing where you're less concerned about just the page and we are more concerned about flows and user goals. Is there a prototyping strategy that you might recommend? Yes, so prototyping has to be thought about as the cheapest way for you to try out ideas. And it really needs to be more than the end goal. So if you're not trying to build a prototype, you're prototyping. What that means is that evaluation and design go hand in hand. For in order to do prototypes well, you really need to start with stories of use. So in the real world, resources are finite. And time, for instance, is a finite resource. So as designers or developers, what we want to make sure is that, is this the right design? That is the question we want to answer first. In order to do that, you need to prioritize what kind of stories or experiences will people have with this particular application, and then just start from the top. But at every time, you're keeping a story of use in focus, and that's what we want to build, try it out with users as soon as possible. So don't be obsessed with just the page but move on into the story. And if you don't have a story of use, prioritize. And if you don't know where to start first, that really means you need to start your research again. Right? You've forgotten some critical piece, start the stories. Yeah. And this is what I mean by prototyping the experience and not the application. I love that it keeps the user's experience in mind as opposed to the app and the final product and what you think you might want to get to eventually. That's right. So how do interactive prototypes and custom animations and transitions all work together in Indigo Studio? In Indigo Studio, it's really about bringing these three things together. It tries to do just enough in each of these three buckets. The first bucket being drawing UIs, the second bucket being able to add interactions or gestures. And animation is something like you click on something and the button moves to the right, or you close a panel and the panel slides to the left. And that kind of transitions helps user understand where they are, what just actually happened in the interaction, and it's not immediate. Sometimes you have to slow it down a little bit, right? And that, those kind of interaction aesthetics does add a little bit more delight you know, into the application experience. There is an element which you have drawn, there's an interaction which has been applied to it, which is the trigger, and then there's a transition. And all the smooth transitions you're seeing are actually built natively in Indigo Studio. Can you talk about the relationship between storyboards, screens, and screen parts and how they can help in designing prototypes? The way we see it is storyboards represent the, the broadest uh, story you want to tell. And what that means is that it's a mix of real world scenes and UIs you have designed. And we want to be able to present them in context. And how that happens is that you can add both scenes to storyboards, like it's like a person sitting at a cafe, looking at the phone, or you can actually add your screen to the storyboard. So basically you see the storyboard is the biggest construct and the, the screen becomes one, one part of it. And then screen part, as the name suggests, is part of the screen. And we designed that so, so that people can reuse bits and pieces of the screen in other places. So you as a company or as a team may have a design language, and there are UI elements you constantly reuse. They're customized to your, to your organization. With screen part, you can basically create them, create your own custom library, and then just reuse them in projects. And the screen parts go inside screens. So there's a clear hierarchy between storyboards, screen
screens and screen pads and one goes inside the other, just like Russian doll. Like you mentioned, there are a lot of other design tools out there and most have a wealth of toolbars and dialogues out there, usually like right in front of you all the time, <laughs> but Indigo isn't like that. Why is that? We actually designed it such that when you are starting a design, we wanted to get out of your way as quickly as possible. Because the more toolbars and buttons we add, the more you have to think about, oh, why is that toolbar there? Maybe there is something important in there for me to look at. But that was not the goal for us. The goal for us is we want you to focus on the story and the interactions you want to actually create for that story. The need for toolbars comes when you want to do something. And we want to show and hide these toolbars whenever you need. And we also try to minimize the need of dialogues and focus more on direct manipulation. You don't go through a dialogue to say that I want it to be resized along the X and along the Y, because you need to think about it as prototyping is good enough. It's not about precision, it's about speed. It's about speed and getting the idea across. And I can guarantee you, you can get stuff done in 25% of the time by focusing on the user story and answering your business needs and less about tool needs. Some prototypes can get very complex, so how can Indigo Studios users manage that complexity? It connects back to the first thing we said, is that you need to prototype the experience of using the app and not the application itself. So the, some of the complexity is resolved right at that point, where you're actually finding, okay, these are the stories I'm going to evaluate with users, and that's what I'm going to prototype first. On top of that, what we do in, in Indigo Studio is we have this concept of an interactions explorer. When you add an interaction, we kind of build a map of how the user would flow through this application. You can actually get a bird's eye view of how this application or the user would progress. The other advantage you get by using this interactions explorer concept is you know how many steps, literally, the user would have to take before they can reach their end goal. So how can developers find Indigo Studio? So Indigo Studio is part of Infogistics Ultimate, our complete UX UI toolkit, which is what you would need to transform what you prototype, these great experiences, into actual applications for web, mobile, desktop, or Windows. And you can also download the trial for Indigo Studio directly from our website and try it out and see whether what we said is true. So really, this is the first step underneath the umbrella of the ultimate, which is everything that you'll need. Exactly. This is a great starting point for developers, whether they would like to invest in code or not, to quickly get that idea out of their head into a format which can be actually evaluated with users quickly, get stakeholder buy-in, and then you can commit to build it right. Well, thank you so much for all of this. My this pleasure. is great. So head to infragistics.com for more information or to download your free trial, and we'll see you there.